Hey everyone, this is Mike from vSwitchZero.com. Today I'm going to go through the process of properly removing a data store in a LUN from a vSphere environment. Unfortunately, this is one of those things that gets done incorrectly quite often. So people will just sort of, you know, remove their LUN or change their, their zoning or presentation without doing the proper steps in vSphere first. Back in the uh, vSphere 4 days, a long time ago, um, uh, the hosts didn't handle this type of situation too well and you used to get hosts that stopped responding and weren't manageable anymore and you quite often had to reboot to recover. Uh, things have improved a lot the last little while, especially with vSphere. I think it was uh, 5.5 and later they made a lot of improvements to the, the way hosts handle APD, all pass down situations and permanent device loss. Um, but nonetheless, it's still something you definitely want to do properly um, in order to save yourself any trouble. So this is my lab environment here. I've got three hosts and I've got a uh, data store called Shared SSD that I'll show you here um, that I'd like to remove. So right now this is a, an iSCSI LUN backed um, by my TrueNAS server. Um, this process is really the same if you've got iSCSI or Fiber Channel. It doesn't apply to vSAN so keep that in mind. This would only be for block level storage that's presented to a host. Um, in this case, I basically want to just remove the physical disks uh, from the, the server itself. So in order to do that, I need to make sure that this is removed from the lab properly. So the first step um, is going to be to evacuate. Now, obviously, you're going to want to get rid of your virtual machines that are on the data store and that sort of thing. But there's probably a lot of other things that you may not realize that are sitting there as well that are either created by vSphere or maybe were stored there uh, a long time ago and you just didn't think about it. So we're going to go through um, how to check all of the common things and make sure that it's properly evacuated before you remove it. So the first thing you'll want to do is just select your data store from the uh, data store's view. And the easiest way to see what virtual machines are on here is just to go to the VMs tab here. And you can see I've got uh, three virtual machines that are currently sitting on it. Uh, one of them is powered on, which you can use storage vMotion to, to move off, and the other two are powered off, so you can just do a cold migration for those ones. I'm going to show you how to migrate um, a virtual machine to a different data store real quick here, just for one of these. I'll do the Mon Front 1, which is uh, currently powered on. If you right-click and go to Migrate, you just change the storage resource only. Click Next. I'm going to move everything that's on the shared SSD to the shared HDD location and finish. And these are pretty uh, small virtual machines so I don't think this will take very long. Um, nonetheless I won't bore you with the migration so I'll just fast forward uh, to when these are finished in the video. Okay, so I did migrate all of them to different data stores, but one thing you'll notice is that this iPerf Bench 1, even though if you look down in the tasks and events, it did migrate, uh, but it's still showing up here. So you might run into the situation if there's still something in the shared SSD data store that's attached to the virtual machine. Uh, usually it's a CD-ROM device, so I'm just going to edit the settings of this VM to see what's going on. And again, remember we migrated it. Um, to the other data store so you can see that shared HDD which is the destination is where the virtual disk is located but as I mentioned there is a data store ISO file attached still so this is more than likely a, a an ISO file that's stored in the shared SSD location that we need to get rid of so what I'll do is I'll just disconnect it and change it back to client device and click OK and you can see it immediately disappeared so just keep that in mind if you've got uh, machines that don't seem to want to disappear from the list. So one other thing you want to look out for are virtual machine templates. Now they don't show up in the hosts and clusters view so quite often people forget that they're there. Um, but if you're in the data store view here you can just click the VM templates button and you can see that I do have uh, one called iperf template still here. Um, it's not possible to migrate a template without first converting it to a virtual machine so I'll just go through that process really quick to show you. You just right click, convert to virtual machine, I'm just going to put it back in the cluster it was from and finish and you'll see it disappears from the templates list and if I go back over to virtual machines here it is here and now at this point I can do the migration um, and change the data store that it's stored on. Um, so I'll just put it to shared HDD again and there it goes and the only thing you'll you'll want to remember is if it was a template and you convert it to a virtual machine, you'll want to convert it back to a template once you're finished. So you can go back to the hosts and clusters view, right click on the template, and I believe it's under template and convert to template. 
And if I go back to the storage view, you can see there's no virtual machines and no templates. So we're good now to proceed. So the next thing you'll want to do now that we know that there are no virtual machines or templates on the data store is to inspect the, uh, the, the files on the data store themselves because there could be things that were stored there on an ad hoc basis, maybe like some ISOs or drivers or, or other files, who knows what's on there. So you definitely want to take a look. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and right click it and go to browse files to open the file browser. And you can see that within this uh, particular data store, We've got one file that's called important file. I kind of put that there just for fun, but um, all kidding aside, you never know what you do store in your data store, especially if it's been around for a few years. So there might have been some, maybe some log files stored there, a core dump file, an ISO that's important to you. Um, at any rate, you definitely want to take a look and make sure that if there is one here, you're going to move it off. Uh, if there is something, just click on it. You can go use the move to button up here. And again, I'm just going to move this over to the shared HDD location right into the root. That'll move off and it'll disappear. You can also see there's an ISOs uh, folder here that I put there at some point. And inside I can see there's a one ISO file and a couple of uh, looks like Intel drivers. I don't need any of this, so I'll just ignore that. If I go back to the root location, you can see that there are some other things that are located here. Um, the .dvs data folder, don't worry about that. That's just uh, some cached configuration data of your uh, vSphere distributed switch. Um, that is disposable and redundant. So if you remove this data store, there's a copy of this elsewhere, so you don't have to worry about that. The std.sf is uh, metadata related to the data store, so nothing you need to worry about there. Uh, vSphere HA, this folder here tells me that this data store at some point was configured um, as a heartbeat data store. So we'll go through how to check that in a second. Other things to look out for too, it's not listed here, but sometimes you'll see a content lib folder, which tells you there's a content library stored on the data store. And uh, you might need to go, go and um, get everything out of the content library and delete it and create a new one in a new data store. There's not really an easy way to migrate a content library right now, but um, that's something else that you'll commonly see there. Um, so in this case, the only thing I really see here that I need to deal with is the vSphere HA folder. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the hosts and clusters view, and we're going to check the HA configuration for the cluster. So if I go to the configure tab and vSphere availability, and you can see HA is turned on. And if I go to edit, we'll go to the uh, heartbeat data stores tab. And you can see I have two data stores selected right now for HA heartbeating, uh, shared NVMe and shared SSD. So that's why that folder is located there. So I'm going to go ahead and uncheck shared SSD and I'm going to change it to shared HDD instead so that we still have two selected and hit OK. And after a brief reconfig task, that should be done. Now, one thing I have noticed in the past is if you uncheck the data store, um, there isn't a cleanup activity that happens. So you will still see the vSphere HA folder here. Uh, don't worry about it though, as long as you've selected uh, another one, you're, you're fine. This, this data that's in here is uh, disposable anyway. So no need to save it or anything like that. Um, so that's basically it. So now we have evacuated the um, data store and we're ready to move to the next uh, part, which is unmounting. So in order to uh, unmount, newer versions of vSphere thankfully have a wizard that allow you to do it for multiple hosts at the same time. We're just going to right click on the uh, data store and we're going to go to the unmount option. And you can see here that we have a list of all of the hosts that is currently mounted on. I'm going to going to select all of them and hit OK. And you can see down at the at the bottom, you're going to have one task per host. So if this was a large cluster, it might take some time. It's going to do them serially one at a time, but you can see it's doing ESX1, which is finished, and ESX2 is now going, and the third one. So you can see now that the data store is not accessible, and that's what we want. So we've basically made the, uh, the file system uh, inaccessible to all of the hosts. But um, we're not quite done yet. This is where a lot of people incorrectly think they can go ahead and change their LUN pr presentation or remove their, their LUN from their, their storage device. Uh, but there's still one more thing that needs to be done. So even though the file system is taken care of, we still have the physical device attached to each of the hosts that we need to detach. And um, I'll go do that now. And this is done from the hosts and clusters view. Um, you can just select any of the hosts in the, in the cluster to do this. 
So I'm going to start with ESX1 and I'm going to go to configure and then down to storage devices. And I'm going to find the LUN that's associated with shared SSD. So you can see right here it is LUN number one, which is a true NAS iSCSI disk. Um, in the past, I don't believe this data store column used to be here. So there was some manual um, cross-referencing you'd have to do from the command line to find this, or you'd ask your storage administrator to make sure you've got the right NAA ID before you uh, detach it. But in this case, it's quite easy to do. We can clearly see that it's shared SSD. Um, and then you can see there's this option at the top that says detach. Now, when I click this, it's going to bring up another wizard. Again, it allows me to do it for more than one host, which is great. Uh, again, in past versions of vSphere, you'd have to actually go to each host individually and do it, which could take a lot of time. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick all three and say yes. And we should see this go italicized and grayed out, which is exactly what we want to see. And then under the operational state column, we can see it's detached. So this essentially means that all of the hosts um, that have this uh, LUN in the detached state don't care about it whatsoever. It could disappear, it could fail, it could you know, be unwritable. Any sort of condition that happens to this uh, LUN is completely irrelevant. It just does not care. So now I can go over to my storage device and remove the LUN. There's many different ways you can do this. And of course, your, your storage device is probably going to be different than what I have here. So I'm just going to do it because it's really quick to show you how, how it's done with uh, TrueNAS here. But if I go over to the uh, sharing section and pick iSCSI, we can see that there's uh, certain associated uh, targets. So we have three LUNs here, 0, 1, and 2. And I can basically just remove the, the LUN to extent mapping for the um, LUN number 1 just by clicking these three dots here and going to delete. This is not actually deleting the... Um, the LUN itself, it's just removing the uh, the presentation, so to speak. So I'm just going to confirm that. And now you can see that there's only LUN 0 and 2 on the uh, the true NAS box uh, being presented to the host. So now if I go back to the um, vSphere environment, we need to do a rescan in order for that to take effect. So even though LUN 1 has been removed from the storage device, it still shows up here. And again, this has to do with the, uh, the host not caring about it and not trying to communicate with it. Um, so we need to do a rescan. You can do that on a host by host basis by going to the storage adapters and rescan storage option. Or you can do a rescan for the entire cluster, which is easier. Um, you do have to be a bit cautious with this, though. If you have a really large environment, um, doing you know a rescan on 32 hosts or whatever the maximum number is could take some time, and it might slow things down a little bit. So you may want to do it in batches uh, if that's a problem for you. But in this case, it's just a lab, and we've only got three hosts. So I'm just going to right-click, go to Storage, and Rescan Storage. And again, this is kind of the error message that I was talking about. And I'm just going to hit OK. And again, it'll queue up all three hosts for a storage rescan. And that was pretty quick. So if I go back over to host 1 and I'll go back to storage devices, we should see that LUN 1 is completely gone now. And I'll just check the other ones real quick, make sure it's the same. And yes, it is. So there you have it. That's how to properly remove a, a data store and a LUN from a vSphere environment. Hope you found that helpful. Uh, please like this video and subscribe if you'd like to see more. Thanks very much.